It is the National Week of Action for Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women and Relatives. This is a crisis that has hit the Yakima Reservation hard. It sure has. The Justice Department's MMIP Regional Outreach Program, though, is working to change that. Today, Bree Blackhorse was formally sworn in as the first assistant U.S. attorney dedicated to prosecuting cases involving missing and murdered Indigenous people. She is the first Native American AUSA to be working out of the Yakima office and has worked with the Yakima Nation for years. Our country has historically failed to meet the crisis of missing or murdered Indigenous people with the urgency and resources it demands. That historical failure stops now. Black Horse will be working on MMIP cases across the Northwest region, which includes Washington, Oregon, Montana, Idaho, and California. It is a step toward rebuilding trust between the tribes and federal authorities, but there are many other challenges that they face in investigating and prosecuting these kind of cases. Yeah, so Apple Valley News Now's Emily Goodell spoke to the FBI and the U.S. Attorney's Office for a behind the scenes look at what it takes. At least 31 indigenous people missing from the Yakima Reservation. Others already found dead. Some killers behind bars, but others still at large. In Washington state, those cases fall under federal jurisdiction. When we're uh, addressing violent crimes in Indian country under the Major Crimes Act, the jurisdictional hook needs to be that on tribal lands, we either have an enrolled member as a victim or as the defendant, as the offender in the crime. If not, they can't prosecute. It's even harder if the suspect isn't 18. But there's been an uptick in juvenile crime and that could really make the community feel unsafe. And I've been asked, why aren't you doing more? Why can't the federal government become involved? She says it's because their jurisdiction over juveniles is limited and most cases handled at the state or tribal level. When we get involved, it's only in the most serious of cases that involve juveniles who are suspected of murder or rape or really dangerous violent crimes. And to do that, we need to proceed in court with all the materials under seal. So it can also be very challenging for the community because we're not not able to talk about these cases while they're going on. Because it could put the case and the safety of people involved at risk. If anything comes out about the investigation or the prosecution that could interfere with our ability to effectively bring that case in court, we would be devastated and justice wouldn't be done. But lack of transparency and limited communication are frustrations for the community, especially victims' family members, like Sissy Strong Reyes, who waited years for her sister's case to make it into the court system. While these cases and many cases do take uh, sometimes years um, in certain cases, um, what we want them to know uh, similar to the Resinda Strong cases, whether or not you hear from the FBI, know that our people continue to work, we continue to investigate, we continue to collect evidence and move those cases forward. To do that, they need witnesses to speak up, but many stay quiet, fearing retaliation. Authorities say that concern is valid, but there's more safety in federal protection. If someone need to be moved or provided housing or provided other kind of sustaining life ability, um, we can bring that to them uh, to help belay those fears and allow them uh, to be able to help us bring justice. To make sure no more names are added to the list of missing indigenous people. On the Yakima Reservation, Emily Goodell, Apple Valley News Now. Now, when it comes to the Rosetta Strong case, seven people have been indicted in connection with the conspiracy to cover up her murder. We have much more about that case on our website, applevalleynewsnow.com. And if you're looking for other ways to engage in this week of action and to learn more about the crisis, there are several opportunities coming up. The War Cry broadcast is doing a live podcast and brown bag lunch lecture at noon on Friday at the Accommodation Cultural Center. Red's Gallia, Missing and Murdered Indigenous Awareness Walk and Stand for Justice is coming up at 1 p.m. Sunday at the Heritage Cultural Center in Toppenish. And finally, there is the MMIP Symposium from 8 to 5 Tuesday at Legends Casino. That's where newly sworn in MMIP Assistant U.S. Attorney Bree Blackhorse will be speaking.